What's up everyone, my name is Thomas and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about how to get faster and smoother playback inside of DaVinci Resolve. So when I first started editing inside of Resolve, I didn't really know the best ways to run proxies, optimize media, or even the render cache. And I didn't really need to use it for a while because I was using B-Raw, which runs really well inside of DaVinci Resolve. But when we got the C70, I started editing with the, I think it was the HEVC and the XFAVC files, which I'm kind of only using the XFAVC right now. And they're 4K, they're 10 bit, 422, and they were not running well at all. So I ran into some issues trying to get smooth playback with these giant files. And I'm gonna go through a couple of the different ways that you can get smoother playback inside of Resolve. And after a few months of editing with these files, I kind of really figured out the best way to get smooth playback with some of these heavy files. So today we're gonna to be walking through the three different ways of getting smooth playback, as well as a couple of different tips and tricks along the way that you can use to make editing a lot quicker. Currently I'm on a 2017 MacBook Pro, fully spec'd out, 16 gigs of RAM, quad core processor. These new file types don't really run well on this. And I think an M1 Mac Mini is kind of a necessity at this point, especially for those HEVC files. I heard they just run really well, but for now I gotta run proxies and try to find these little shortcuts and hacks to make my process smoother. Though DaVinci Resolve does run a lot smoother than Premiere, it's just these heavy file types. You can't really avoid it if you don't have a solid editing machine. So let's get into Resolve and let's go through the best ways to get yourself fast playback and a smoother playback while editing inside of Resolve. Let's go to that right now. All right, so we're inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. We're in the studio version, which is the paid version. Go grab some clips. So right here I have a bunch of Canon MXF files, which are from the C70, they're 10 bit 422. Let's add all these to a timeline already. This computer's kind of not liking this. Just drag it in. All right, so we have all of our clips in our timeline here. These are all 4K 10 bit 422 clips. And usually when I have a timeline like this, I'm pulling selects. And when I'm trying to play it back, it stutters like crazy. See that we're running 15 frames per second, but it's really jittery and jolty. This one seems to be doing decent right there. It's just not really a smooth experience. So originally, when I first started out in Resolve, I would go up to playback I would go to render cache and click smart. I like using render cache because it reminds you of Premiere, how it would render out the whole timeline so you could play it back smoothly all the way. And for the longest time, I didn't really know why the render cache wasn't working well. First way to fix that is to go into your settings here, go down to render cache format. And th these are the automatic settings that Resolve gives you. And 422HQ is a pretty large file. So let's go to 422 proxy and then go to render cache. And then we'll go to render cache output on. Then these should start going. Yeah, it's already starting to go right here. So if you like using the render cache, and if you didn't know about the settings, that's one way to get it to move quicker. So I'm gonna turn that off. The next way to get smooth playback is through optimized media. And you can see here that we have optimized media clicked. Same thing, we go into the settings, optimized media resolution and format are right here. Same thing, it gives us automatic and 422HQ, which doesn't make any sense. It ends up being like almost a one-to-one -one ratio, maybe a little bit smaller than your source files. So with the optimized media resolution, I usually do 1 8th or 1 16th, do that. Go into here, we select all of our clips, and then we click generate optimized media. And then you can wait and let that go all the way through. So with optimized media, that's another way to get nice low res proxy type files. They're a little bit different than proxies. Not really too sure exactly what the difference is, but that was my main process for a while. I was using the optimized media, but I don't use that anymore. The main one I do is proxy media. So we go into playback, click proxy media. Same thing, go into the settings. We'll do 1 8th and then 422 proxy. And I believe I already have a bunch of these made. So we can go down, you can either generate them there or you can link them. So let's go through, let's find these source files. A little slow. It was 
central coast. Uh, proxies are here. Let's click that. Open. And it's searching. This laptop slowing down a bunch. Especially for those field trip episodes. This laptop's just dying. All right, so we got our proxies in here. And as you can see, the quality is horrible. If you turn that off and on, let's go to a clip that's a little more in focus. All right. You can just see that it just destroys the quality, but proxies are meant for editing. So you can turn those on and you get like a low res 480p file. I think like all of these would take up barely a gig on my hard drive. So it works out pretty well. And even still, just with those settings, it's clean. And this is the main one that I use to get smooth playback. And running proxies doesn't take that long. I think for like 100 gigs of footage, it takes like 30 minutes to run all of these, which honestly isn't that bad. You run that, go make some food, go make a coffee, scroll through Instagram or YouTube, watch something inspirational. It's really not the end of the world. So those are proxies. Another thing you can do if you don't have proxies, so that's all off. So you have timeline proxy mode here. This is another like little secret. So you can see it's pretty sharp. Go to timeline proxy mode, quarter resolution. Does the same thing. I haven't really tested it to see if I need to have proxies already made or not, but I know with turning the proxies off and doing that, it turns it on. But if you're still running into trouble, Here's something that I do all the time. So when I first make a new timeline, I go according to my project settings, which is 1920 by 1080. I will pull all of my selects. I will edit everything right up until delivery. Everything will be inside of a 1080 timeline. The reason being is that your computer doesn't have to render every single frame at 4K. It just makes the process a bit smoother because you're not as you're not using as much power to generate those images. I like coloring in 4K though, but editing and pulling selects inside of 1080 is definitely the way to go. There's no reason not to. And then right before export, you just go to timelines, timeline settings, and then you just click Ultra HD. All set and done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video. I hope it was helpful. If you're a DaVinci Resolve user, if you're not, if you're editing Premiere or Final Cut, just run proxies. It's definitely the easiest way to go about these things if you have some pretty heavy footage to work with. Like this video if you learned something, comment down below what you learned, and subscribe if you haven't. So I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.